happen. It'll happen. It'll happen because people are getting to the point, and there's a lot of money out there that can be used to do this. People out there are saying, hey, how come you can speak on ABC, CBS, NBC, and PBS? That's me. I speak on secular, 10 to 1 on Christian. Do you know mm -hmm. why? Mm. Because the Christians won't let me talk. Because they don't want to hurt anybody. But the seculars will let me talk. How do you like that? Yeah. Well, you're here. Yeah, uh, well, I'm not talking about uh, our program here. Now, you said earlier in the program, I liked what you said. You said, we're going to pull any punches, okay? Uh-huh. Pow. You ready for this? Uh, go. <laughs> okay. You just named three denominations, and I'm not here to tear them apart, but yeah. you obviously feel they're totally occult and uh, anti-biblical. Okay. Um, Jehovah's Witnesses say that the Trinity is pagan nonsense, that Jesus Christ is the Archangel Michael, that his death on the cross did, wasn't even on a cross, it was on a torture stake. It didn't pay for your sins, you've got to work for it. And when he rose from the dead, he arose as a ghost. Plus the fact that he came back in 1914 invisibly and has been running the kingdom from Brooklyn. That ought to, tur that ought to turn you off immediately, okay? Then you've Brooklyn. Got, then you've got the Mormon church, Donnie and Marie Osmond, right? The Mormon Tabernacle Choir, mine eyes have seen the glory, right? You got that. Beautiful. Beautiful, marvelous. What's behind it? Mormon church says, as God was, as God is, man may be, as man is, God once was. As God is, man may become. You can become a God. Mormonism. Jesus Christ is the spirit brother of Lucifer, who became the devil. They teach that? Oh, yes. Not only that. So obviously anything you say tonight, you have documented proof. I teach in a law school. Do you think I'm a fool? <clears throat> right. Crazy I might be, I'm not a fool. No. See? Carry now, on. Uh, there's not... I think we should get, I think we should get the Hawaiians back to saying the fight is on. And... <laughs> But let's, let's get the record straight. Okay, carry the on. The cults declared war on the church. We no, didn't I agree with you ever. here. I agree with We're you. We're supposed to respond to that, you see? Right. But that's what you're not getting. Instead, you're getting, shh, don't say that. That's not loving. Well, by that standard, neither was Jesus. Because when he met the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the scribes, and the Herodians, he barbecued them. Matthew 23. I'm very mild. I mean, compared to his dealing with false doctrine. Now, Christ dealt with it. Paul dealt with it. Uh, we're not dealing with it. We don't want to face it. Now, Jehovah's, the Mormons absolutely categorically say that when Jesus Christ came into the world, into existence by sexual relations between a resurrected God and the Virgin Mary. Now, that's blasphemous garbage. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. Now, why won't our Christian leadership that dominates our major networks and dominates the country come together and say Mormonism is the most rapidly growing dangerous non-Christian cult in the world and we've got to stand together against it. Why won't they do it? <clears throat> mm -hmm. uh, the mind science cults are all over the place. Christian science, religious science. Um, I could go, there's, there's Christian science. Um, the various mind science, Unity School of Christianity, all of them deny the Trinity. All of them deny the deity of Christ. All of them deny the blood atonement of the cross that you're talking about advertising that book. Yes. They deny it categorically. And the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead in his own body. That's a classical attack on Christianity. Tell me why the Christian church should be silent in the face of those attacks. Oh, I think you're right. And I think it's good that you're sitting here tonight from my personal point of view saying what you're saying. Let me go to an, another approach for a moment. Matthew chapter 15. Yeah. Jesus said about these who taught other doctrines, right. let them alone. Now, the philosophy today, maybe in a lot of Christian networks and organizations, Christian organizations is, hey, if that guy over there on that corner in that church is all the organizations that you've just mentioned, plus others, 
is not teaching truth and we believe that they're not teaching truth, let them alone. God will deal with the tares simultaneously with the wheat at the time of the harvest. Their idea is, and I want you to, I, I need an answer to this, yep. is let's preach the gospel, which is the truth, and the preaching of the truth automatically counteract error, and we don't have to bother them, in the words of Jesus, let them alone, just preach the truth that will counteract the error. Don't get involved with them. Look at your context of Matthew 15. He's not telling you to leave false teachers alone. There were people going around healing in his name, yes. using his name and right. so forth. Jesus said, if they're not against us, they're with us. Right. Leave them alone. But these people are against us. They've declared against us. So that position, the position then that I yeah. just mentioned yeah. of preach the truth, it'll automatically counteract error, leave the personalities and the names out, you don't agree with it. No, not only do I not agree with it, I don't know one major theologian in the history of the entire Christian church that will agree with it. I don't know one commentary that will exegete <clears throat> Matthew 15 to teach that. Now, if you really want to get technical on what the texts say, 47% of the New Testament, according to who's the greatest, one of the greatest living New Testament scholars, is apologetic, which means defending Christianity. Yes. If you could just turn the truth loose, and let it do its job and not defend it. Why do you have all the admonitions in the scripture? Contend earnestly for the faith, once for all delivered unto the saints. For the time will come when men will not put up with sound doctrine. They shall gather to themselves teachers who will tickle their ears and the truth of God will be turned into mythology. Reprove them, rebuke them, exhort them with patience and teaching. Where's the rebuke? Where's the reproof? Where's the exhortation? You see, the people who are telling us not to defend Christianity are the people incapable of doing it. Mm -hmm. And the danger, the danger is, not only are they are incapable of doing it, but they hinder those that are capable. They stand in the way of the defense of the gospel. You good? Mm -hmm. And uh, so you old. believe church and Christian broadcasting should take a far more militant stand and come right out and name the baby John. I can see no reason why we do not follow a biblical principle. First of all, I'm a professor in a law school, Simon Greenleaf School, school right. of Law. We you had Dr. Dr. Montgomery on here. on here, right? He did a great job well, Wednesday he's night. He's a brilliant man. He and he's is. done a great job for God. The point that we're making, and he's making, and the school's making, and a lot of us are making in the Christian world, it, we're growing in numbers. We're not diminishing. I'm happy to say the young people are listening to us. Praise the Lord. And the more they listen, the more other people are going to listen because they're the future of the church. Whatever future we've got left, it's young people. I've stopped talking to the theologians because the theologians are too busy in the ivory tower. Mm -hmm. I want to talk to the kids who are out there fighting for their lives mm -hmm. because nobody's helping them. Right. And, and what we're facing, what we're facing is a direct denial of the defense of Christianity. And Dr. Montgomery brought that up. I brought that up. Others have brought it up. And the more we defend Christianity, the more people are going to say, well, that has merit to it. The more we obey scripture, the more people will listen to us. Remember the apostles defended the gospel before the Sanhedrin? They didn't walk into the Sanhedrin in Acts chapter 3 and 4 and say, well, I mean, you stay on your synagogue and, and your temple and we'll stay on our corner and we're going to leave you alone. You leave us alone and don't worry anymore. I mean, after all, God will preach the gospel and God's going to save people anyhow. So you guys go about your way. We'll go about our way. Is that what you get? You get Peter saying in there, whether it's proper to obey God or man, mm. you decide. Mm -hmm. Neither is there salvation in any other. There's no other name given under heaven among men whereby you must be saved. Jesus Christ. Well, why do we not enunciate that against Jewish, Islamic, Christ, non-Christian religions and cultic structures in the United States that are constantly attacking Christianity? Why do we not respond to them? Why don't we train the young people? Why don't we make a defense of the gospel in our day? And the reason is because we're afraid we're going to get people mad at us. They're not going to like us anymore. They're not going to support our work. And then we're going to get turned off. But do you well, think there's a, a better way to do it? Because like if you came on all, all the time, say these networks came on and, and they were blasting. always t blasting, other well, religions, I'm not suggesting that. Instead of maybe teaching them, do, do you think it would help to like teach them while they were, if you just tell somebody, 
hey, you know, this I'm isn't suggesting right. you're right. I'm suggesting balance. Right. I'm suggesting that instead of being all over on the evangelism side and the teaching of the Christian life, we teach also the defense of Christianity. How you stand up for your faith. Listen, you know this as well as I know it. You've had enough experience. Secular colleges, universities, and liberal seminaries eat Christians alive. You send a kid from a Christian home and a Christian church into a liberal situation and into a secular humanistic context, mm -hmm. and they go in like a revolving door. They're singing all hail the power of Jesus' name going in, and they come out bearded, bathless, and rebellious. And nobody knows what happened to them. Mm -hmm. I know what happened to them. I was there. Mm -hmm. I think you do too. Mm -hmm. They didn't have any answers and reasons for their faith. None. I'm not suggesting we yeah. go on television and blast all the time. I'm suggesting that part of our television programming, our radio programming, our Christian educational approach, take into consideration the necessity of training people to defend the gospel and their faith. I agree with you, and I, and I must say this. Um, <clears throat> I don't get a chance to watch a lot of Christians. Watch this network as much as I possibly can, and I, I see a trend that should be pleasing to you from your point of view that on Trinity Broadcasting, they're moving more and more, not into just we're going to entertain we and inspire you with music and uh, teach the basic fundamental elementary truths of the Bible, but I see a move in some of the ministries on this channel that are getting into an apologetic presentation of the defense of Christianity. Maybe it's taken a while to get there because we're told to love your enemy. Well, loving your enemy doesn't mean that you become John and Mabel Dormat. True. And, but I, I and see, Paul and loved I his enemies, too. Mm -hmm. But God help you if you got in the way. That's right. Look what he did to the Galatians. Well, you, you stupid Galatians. That, that's Paul. That's not me. You stupid Galatians. He did. Somebody else used that word yeah. stupid here tonight. I, I... Man, and today, if I said, you stupid Christians, everybody say, oh, Walter Martin is insulting the body. Paul writes, and he takes the gloves off and says, you stupid Galatians, whoever led you away from the truth I gave you. And so soon, how dumb can you be? And he chews them up for three chapters, right? That's right. I mean, he gets to the Corinthians, it's a good thing I'm not there, <laughs> right? And it's a good thing I'm not there, because if I was there, That's well, right. look out, you see? Now, what happened to Peter? Uh, chewing away in Second Peter on the people that are pushing the truth into the background. Sure. What about Paul? The people who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. What is censorship but the suppression of truth? If you can't speak, you're violating the First Amendment of the Constitution. Mm -hmm. I'm not attacking the cults. I spent 35 years of my life bringing people out of cults to Jesus Christ. Which is a great ministry. Yeah. Fantastic ministry. I'm not going to attack them. Yeah. I love them. I love them. But you're going to show where they're in error. But if I don't show where they're in error... Then you're wrong. If the, right, I'm wrong. And if the trump on certain sound, mm -hmm. says Paul, mm -hmm. then how will you prepare yourself for battle? You see, the met methodology and the philosophy governing the Christians today in many areas is there is no battle. The only battle you've got is the battle that you don't have enough faith. Or the only battle you've got is you haven't got a new Mercedes. Or you're not healthy enough. These are the battles they're fighting, or whether Jesus came after the tribulation before it or in the middle of it. Mm -hmm. uh, they're majoring in the minors, mm -hmm. and they're forgetting that if you don't defend the gospel, you're disobeying Christ. 